In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the front subframe mount bushing in your Nissan Rogue located here in your front subframe. I want to go ahead and remove your center cap. Go ahead and put your fingers underneath and gently tug outward. Pop those right off. It's going to give you access to the five 21 millimeter nuts. Go ahead, loosen and remove those. Once you have those off, grab the wheel, remove it, and set it aside. Using an 18 millimeter socket to remove this nut on our lower ball joint bolt. Rotate the knuckle so we can gain access to the lower side here to insert our chisel to open this up allowing our lower ball joint to come out. Insert your chisel in the back side here. Tap that in and that should open that up a little bit, allowing our ball joint able to come out from the unit. Using a pry bar, go ahead and gently tap that down. You wanna go ahead and try and separate this here without tearing the ball joint boot. Once that's separated, you remove the chisel. We're gonna repeat the same process for the passenger side. Using an 18 millimeter socket on the nut and a 20 millimeter wrench on the back side, loosen this nut and remove the end link. Repeat for the other side. On the bottom of our cradle, there are two 21 millimeter bolts, one here, one here. These go up and hold our power steering rack to the cradle itself. We're gonna go ahead and use our 21 millimeter wrench to get up on top of the nut and use our impact gun to remove the bolts. Now up top here, we used a mirror so that you could actually see the nut that we're going to be putting our wrench onto. With that secured in place, loosen and remove the bolt. Remove that bolt and the nut. Gaining access to the passenger side nut is a little more complicated. You want to put your box end wrench in front of the sway bar. Find the nut and drop that down onto the nut. Then use your impact and remove the bolt. You can reach up, remove that nut. Go ahead and set those aside. Using an 18 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove the two bolts holding our transmission torque strut in place. Remove this mount. Using a 12 millimeter socket, want to go ahead, loosen, and remove the two nuts holding the exhaust hanger in place. In our case here, that stud broke. So I'll have to replace that with a bolt. Go ahead and take that bushing, use our pry bar, just slide that down and work that down. Now this is separated from the cradle. On the back side of the cradle, you're gonna find two 18 millimeter bolts on this little tab looking unit here. Loosen and remove those. I'm gonna work this back and forth. Ah. 
Now once you have these two out, go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. At this point, we put our pole jacks up underneath the cradle, not touching it yet, but just as a safety precaution. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start to remove the two rear 18 millimeter bolts. Before we remove our rear bolt here on the passenger side, I'm gonna go ahead and raise up my jack. Not touching it, just underneath it so we can see the cradle start to drop down. I'm gonna repeat for the other side. When we loosen and remove this bolt, this cross bracket here will come off and the tail end of the cradle should lower down slightly. Now the cradle itself is still held in by the two front bolts. We do have some movement here. And I was able to pull that down a little bit onto our jacks. Go ahead and loosen and remove the front passenger side 18 millimeter bolt. Let's go ahead and remove the front driver side bolt. Now, when performing a subframe bushing replacement, there are four of them in total. Once you have the whole cradle out, now is the time to go ahead and replace all four at the same time. Shown here is our worn front subframe bushing. I want to go ahead and replace this one here. I'm going to use a air chisel around the edge here to work this bushing up and out. By utilizing the air chisel, we tore the bushing. This had popped out, leaving us the sleeve inside. And we simply used the air chisel to roll the edges of this in, and this popped out. Clean up the inside of the sleeve here. And get ready for the installation of the new part. Clean up any burrs that are around the edge. Make sure that it's nice and smooth for the installation going to install our installation tool, slide our bushing down and in. Now at this point here, we press the bushing through until the ridge here or the flange is flush on top of the subframe. If you want to, you can now go ahead and repeat that process for the other side. With our cradle almost all the way up, the next part is to line up the bushings with the holes in the body. Now once we have our bushings lined up, we can install the bolt through the bottom, feed it up and into the body of the vehicle. Once that lines up, we can go ahead and manipulate the rest of the cradle into position. As we're bringing up the backside of the cradle, you wanna watch the sway bar end link, make sure that it goes up and over the inner tie rod, and that comes over the boot. Make sure that your link is free and facing upward. You wanna go ahead and repeat that for both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and install our front bolt here on the driver's side. It's gonna feed up into the mount and into the body. Now I was going to take a little bit of manipulation here with the cradle. It looks like we can raise this up a bit more. Now that we have this front bolt caught a few threads, we're going to go ahead and use our ratchet and just run it up a couple more threads to secure this. And then we'll go ahead and install the other forward mounted bolt. Installing our front bolt and washer.
feed that up and in. Now I have to go ahead and rock that cradle just a little bit to get that to line up and then get that front bolt caught a few threads. Now I'm gonna use a pry bar between the subframe and the radiator support. I'm gently gonna apply some backward pressure to help get this lined up. With the cradle supported by one pole jack, I was able to grab the other pole jack and I'm putting it in the middle here so you can go ahead and raise this up evenly. With the cradle jacked up quite a bit, but leaving some space in the top so you can see the threaded hole, you're gonna bring your bracket up with one of the bolts. I'm gonna line that up. And you might have to wiggle that cradle just a little bit to get that bolt to line up. With this bolt threaded in, let's go ahead and line up the other side. I'm gonna do the same here. With all four of the main cradle bolts installed, install the four bracket bolts. We did apply some anti-seize compound to these threads. And do the same for the passenger side. We'll tighten down the rear subframe bushings first. Tighten down our four bracket bolts. Tighten down the front two bolts. With the cradle fully secured in place, we can now go ahead and remove our jacks. Install the two steering rack bolts. And when you push that bolt up, you're gonna get install the nut. There's a nut right here that goes up on the back side of it or the top of it. Get that started. I'm gonna repeat for the passenger side. You wanna make sure that the bolt goes through the rack. You can see that the rack moves around a little bit. I want to go ahead and snug these. We don't want to make it super tight because we're tightening the bolt through the aluminum steering rack. We don't want to crack that. So simply we want to go ahead and snug this down and then we'll come back and torque it later. wrench on the nut.
install a transmission mount. Snug those down. Torque the four main cradle bolts to 94 foot pounds each. Torque the four 18 millimeter bolts holding the cross brace to 72 foot pounds. Repeat for the passenger side. Torque the two transmission mount bolts here to 81 foot-pounds. Torque our steering rack bolts to 147 foot-pounds. Install the exhaust mount, slide that back. Now if you have the two studs there, go ahead and install the nut. Ours we had to remove because it had snapped, so we're simply going to install a bolt on the back side of it. Install the nut on the other side. Let's go ahead and snug those down. Now once these bolts are bottomed out, you're pretty much all set. You just want to make sure that those are good and snug. Let's go ahead and install our ball joint into the knuckle. Once that's all the way up, let's go ahead and install the bolt. Go ahead and install the bolt. Let's go ahead and snug that down. Using your 18 millimeter, go ahead and tighten this down. Now that we have this tight, go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. Once we do that, we'll come on back and torque these down. Torque our lower ball joint to 46 foot-pounds. Repeat for the other side. Install the sway bar end link into the strut. And 
and tighten that down. I want to go ahead and torque this to 81 foot pounds. Repeat for the passenger side. Go ahead and take your wheel. Line that up. Let's go ahead and get the lug nuts all started by hand first. Once you have them all started, go ahead and snug them down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. Now installing your center cap, you want to make sure that the notch here lines up with the valve stem. Pop it on and you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.